what's going on y'all i had to go get my shit done so the video would have been out earlier but you know i had to go to the shop and they had to work some wonders on my head thank god but you know let's get into this video um as i stated if you follow me on facebook you follow me on twitter and you follow me on instagram i put up there that i won't be doing individual reviews for uh breast and family values like i usually do for the simple fact that and it's no shade it's just that i'm busier on those days uh you know i got shit to do and all that stuff and i just don't feel like it so you know i never said because for some reason people want to get all in their feelings because i said i'm not going to do a you know individual review but i'm gonna put it in the what it is video you know at the very beginning like jesus i didn't say i wasn't going to review the show i just said it wasn't going to be like it usually be some of y'all reading comprehension ain't y'all um forte and you know you start that shit like in fourth grade or whatever I'm just saying, I'm just saying, but you know, it is what it is, so, you know, that's how it is. The Brass Family Values, um, you know, episodes, this is still season four, they're going to continue with, this is episode 11 that came on yesterday, yes, I do put it up on Daily Motion that was up last night, but um, other than that, you just have to wait till the what it is today, and you know, get it on Friday whenever I put it up after I come out to work. You know, you'll still get your stuff, but it just be a little day later or whatever than you usually do. So, no need to be asking. <sighs> Even though I'm pretty sure I'm going to see the question in the comments like, where is the... <sighs> I just said it. But anyway, let's get into the review of the show. Um, because I know a lot of some people want to see and hear about that first and I usually put my um TV reviews in the end if I do it on the what it is but I'm gonna just start doing it at the beginning for the brass and values because that's the only thing that I watch on Thursday. I did not get to see all of cutting up. Cutting up in the ATL or whatever. I saw parts of it before I turned it off because I wasn't focused on it. I had to go to sleep. But um the part that I did see and the part that the person that I think I'm going to like out the show. And no, I'm not reviewing any of it like that. I might talk about it. But from what I've been hearing, Beauty with two eyes. I knew she was going to be some bullshit when um, she had two eyes at the end of her name. Mm -hmm. I just knew it. But what's the girl name? Messiah, Musasa, whatever the fuck. Mufasa, I don't know. From the Congo? Because she's from the Congo. Okay. With the natural hair? Child, I like her. And that's just from that little clip that I seen when they was she was uh like interviewing these girls or whatever. She was like, So why are you here with a straight weave and a natural hair salon? I said, You better ask that question. Come on, Beyonce weave. I said, that's a little shady, but I would ask the same question, okay? I do nothing but natural hair. We don't put weave. We don't put all that chemical and stuff in there. Why would you come in trying to get a job or whatever, represent my company, and you have on a fucking sew-in lace front or whatever the fuck it is that you got? But, you know, that was cute. I got to look at it. I'm going to look at it when I finish this video. But, <clears throat> Brass and Family Values came back, like I said. And, last season, well, the first half of this season, I was over it. Everybody was kind of over all the drama. You know, people was getting beside themselves. People needed to humble themselves a little bit, you know. But I really, and I'm going to be 100% honest, I wasn't even hyped when this first, when this, they said that it was coming back. I knew it was coming back, but I just really wasn't hyped like I usually be. And I think it's because I really feel like the show has run its course. I do. So, if it was to say that the show is not coming back for a season five, I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't be sad. You know, I'd be like, it was good while it lasted, you know, trying to move on to other things. But the episode started off, this episode 11, um, still in season four, episode 11, go for the jugular. Now, let me tell you something. Tamar. Tamar needs to be slapped for this reason and this reason only. When she was sitting at that table with Tony and she said you know how mama say go for the jugular you know and um t talking about the mama because mama Evelyn had to get neck surgery you know uh 
she had a herniated disc in her neck and she was in a lot of pain and when she was at Tamar house or I think it was Tamar house and she was just in there you can just see the pain on her face whatever so I knew this season was about you know her and her surgery basically about my and Evelyn and then mostly about Trina we'll get to that in a second but when Tony and Tamar were sitting there talking okay and then when she said that about her, you know, they're going to go through the neck and go through the jugular and all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. Tamar said the jugular. I thought jugular meant balls. That was similar to another incident that she did when she was on the reel. And somebody said, you know, India is in Asia. She said... Bitch, what? India is not in Asia, okay? That is not in... I said, you gotta be out your goddamn... And she was dead ass serious. She was dead ass serious. India is not in Asia. All right, Tamar. You know, you too old for this. I'm just saying, it was funny. But girl, you know, and it's funny because she be dead ass serious. But moving on from that, um, we gonna... I just... This episode was cute coming back. It wasn't as much drama feel, you know, they wasn't going at each other because y'all remember the last episodes for the first half of the season, they was all at each other's throat because Tamar was in her feelings about the girls coming on, you know, the stage with her and, you know, they keep on fighting and all that stuff and um, Tawanda and Trina, Trina, keep that cute little cut. When she came into that store to get the appliances for her um, bar chick stuff, that was cute. That cute little cut. I said, wait a minute, is that Tony? She favored Tony right in and out. I was like, that is so cute on her. But they was talking about stuff and then that's when Trina spilled the bills, uh, be, 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 spilled the beans to Tawanda and said that she's getting divorced from Gabe and she's already fouled. This time it's for real. And, you know, she was basically like, uh, Keep it quiet. I'll tell the girls because she don't want them judging because she know. Because ain't nobody, nobody in the family was here for her and Gay still being together. We all know this. And, you know, it just reminds me so much of when I used to do the reviews back in the back. And everybody, I used to always say she needs to go ahead and divorce that motherfucker. And then it always, it never fails that it be people up in the comments be like, a man and a woman, you know, you take vows for better and worse, and they should stay together and work it out. And why would you want them to divorce? And I'm sitting here like, so you will put up with that bullshit? You make you another breed, cause Ashley wouldn't, you know. And um, Trina should have been divorced his ass. And you know, they basically it's almost like they making this whole season gonna be about Trina and her bullshit with Gabe, and she got some secrets and stuff to tell about what he actually was doing, but they not telling it yet. And I'm like, so you gonna drag this out probably until episode 16, 17. That's when we are gonna find out what the fuck Gabe really been up to. But basically, um. At that little dinner with Tamar and uh, Tony, you know, Tawanda had called. No, actually, Tamar had called Tawanda because she wanted to get, you know, what the real meaning of juggling meant. I'm sitting here like, girl, unless you're talking about juggling balls, no, juggler is in your throat, you know, your neck, okay? Go for the jugular, you know, cut that bitch jugular, hit him in the throat, you know, shit like that. But that's when... I guess somehow Trina came up and it was like, Tawanda was like, you just need to talk to your sister. I'm sitting here like, Tawanda, now they call you the secret squirrel because you won't say shit, but you messy because you showed enough implied what was something was going on. Girl, I'm not going to tell you exactly what's going on. All I'm going to tell you do is to talk to Trina, okay? Just some shit is going on. I'm not going to tell her business, but talk to Trina. Well, you didn't pipe my interest now, so you might as well just go ahead and tell, you know. But, um... They wind up having a little get-together, all the girls at the end, and they was all talking, and they noticed that Trina was quiet, and here go Tamar. Girl, you okay? What's really going on? Well, like, you got your hair cut. You always get your hair cut when something going on. Tony, you right. <laughs> I was like, no, but I will say this first episode, like I'm saying, it, it was cute because... It was funny a little bit with the little shade between Tamar and Tony. They was like a tag team, shading the fuck out of Trina, and it was funny. And you know they weren't trying to do it maliciously, but it was just cute and funny. And um, uh, basically, she, you know, said that she's getting a divorce from Gabe. And her whole thing is she didn't want to say it because she didn't want that judgment from the sisters because, you know, they was just like exactly what she thought. 
for real this time because you always doing it are you serious like they wouldn't even move back they was like girl okay whatever if you say so but you know she's saying that it's true and like i did before i think they've been divorced officially last month it went through finalized but basically you know they told her that and then tony goes say you know because trina live up in this fairy tale she thinks everything's a fairy tale or something i was like tony 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 hush you know, a way to kick the girl while she down. Or I think they was just trying to make her laugh or whatever. But, of course, they're going to be there for her. And I like when um, Trina and Tawanda went to the lawyer. And they was talking about things. And I was just wondering how that shit was going to work, too. Because, you know, that's when Trina was like, she crazy. Tony even said she was scared of Gabe. You know, and they got business together. And the way that he be staying in... Like, he told her that ain't nobody going to want her. It was like, she ain't all that. Ain't nobody going to want her. And I'm sitting here like, I hate when people go there. When you really th do through with a person, they be like, ain't nobody going to want you. You ain't all that. You know, and I'm like, but I was all there for you to keep on keeping with me. You know, when I wanted to get divorced, like four other times, you didn't want me to get divorced. Okay, you ain't want to sign those papers. You didn't want to leave. You was tracking me. But don't nobody want me. I ain't all that. Uh, okay, that's cute. And, you know, basically saying he crazy and the shit that he'll probably do with the business and, you know, the financial stuff and with her business and try to claim parts of her business. And I said, when he was doing that bar chick shit with you, that was a no-no. That was a no-no. Mm -mm. You involved him when you shouldn't have, but we'll see how that go. And then <laughs> we finally getting a little bit more of Tracy's personality coming out. She, you know... On this radio show, it took four and a half seasons, well actually three and a half seasons for us to actually get um, Tracy to be filming with her family. And I guess she's more loose now since she didn't, you know, did the reality show for the marriage boot camp. So now she's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, she got a better spot. And, you know, look Kevin in the video. Look Kevin. Look Kevin. Look, Kevin told them that, baby, we finna get married. I'm getting married to my girlfriend of three years, and Tracy is not having it. And I understand Tracy was feeling the type of way. She tried to cook um, brunch. He ain't want to stay. He want to go kick it with Olivia. Then they take him out, and she he like, I went and asked her uh, father he, um, blessing to have her hand in marriage. I said, at least you asked, okay? That was a gentleman-like move for you, but... You only 19, boo. You know, he already put school off for you. And I said, here, this, I'm going to break it down. They've been together for three years. So that's like, you know, 16, 17, depending on what you want to call it. So it's like, of course they fucking. And I'm no shade. Look, Kevin don't look like he get pussy thrown at him, you know, a lot like that. You know, maybe after this show aired, you know, he probably went, oh, your mama this. You braxton girls and all this stuff. You want to taste my punani? Probably, you know. But Olivia, probably the first girl that really genuine, could be really genuine like him. And, you know, threw that pussy at him and he took it. And he was like, damn, this is what life is about. And he fell in love with that. And he was like, I got I to gotta lock this down. You know, puppy love, first love, you just never know. It is so many different scenarios with that. But <laughs> Tracy ain't having it. Okay? And then I hate the cliffhanger that they uh, left and talked about some. Is she pregnant? And then they had, you know how they had them looking like, like, they're going to say yes, but then when they come back, it's going to be like, no. And I'm like, why y'all be doing that? But it was a cute little episode. It really was. I, I laughed. I chuckled. It kept my interest a little bit. Um, It dragged a little bit, just a little bit. Child, when Trina and them were telling Mama E about um her getting a divorce from Gabe, and Mama E was like, you know, you got to be prepared because a divorce is war. Mama E is still scoring. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. After all these years, Mama E is still a scoring woman. And when the word divorce and all that shit, separation comes up, she be ready to cut somebody. That's how she talks. But hopefully the rest of the season will go like this without all this bigger and bigger and bigger. But I honestly don't want to see all this shit about Trina. Like, let it be all about Trina. Like, let it equally be about everybody, you know. But that was Braxton Family Values. Um... Now, let's get on to some other news. Some uh, f other fucked up news. Josh Duggar. 
from the Duggar family. If y'all know Jim and um Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar, they got 19 kids and counting, and that's the show on um TLC. And their oldest son is Josh. Uh, when he was a teenager, he molested like five girls, and I think a couple of them probably was his own sisters. And I have, to, and it had to be somebody that they knew that he was doing it to, or you know, a sister or whoever, because they said the father saw him coming out of one of the girls' room, a room with the girl or whatever. So I'm figuring, I'm thinking like. The only way that that probably would make sense is if they was at home and he saw him coming out one of the daughter's room at a late hour because they said he was molesting them and they, and they sleep and shit. And this is when you like 14, 15 years old and shit like that. And instead of automatically reporting it to the cops, he did report it to somebody else. They talked about it. They tried to send him away, get some help for it. And then he came back. He did it again. And that's when I guess he talked to a cop and they didn't file a report. This cop goes on trial, so all his stuff for some shit that he did. So all his stuff is being laid bare about all the reports and stuff that he's done. And then this comes up. And then it gets to a tabloid magazine. And then I'm thinking like, hmm, let's see how they're going to spin this. But he basically didn't deny it. He came on out and said that this happened when I was a younger, uh, when I was a teenager. I learned my lesson. I knew the path that I was going down was wrong and all this shit. Mind you, he's married. And he's about to have his fourth child. And I think he got at least two girls. One, I know he got one girl, for sure. But um, it was just... And just like they did Honey Boo Boo, they cut the show off. Because I was like, this is not going to stay on. This is not going to stay on. See, I know they. this is one part of y'all, bread and butter. Okay, doing this show, taking care of all them kids. Not saying that the daddy is poor or whatever. And, you know, he probably was doing something. Because when the show first got started, um, they used to do this special. And they did this special when they was trying to get this big house. And they was fixing it up. It was like this big old factory that they fixed up. Bitch, I used to watch it way back and way back when it first started. I did, but I just fell off. I just didn't care no more. And, you know, after that, um, it came out today that the show was going to get canceled. Not They didn't say canceled, but they put it from a schedule, the schedule, Aaron's schedule. And um, basically, they don't know what's going to go on. So I'm just going to say it's canceled because, you know, like everybody said, the same thing that happened with Honey Boo Boo. Remember when June or whatever was going with the man that was, um, had sexually abused her daughter or whatever, and they found that out, and they said, no, we don't condone this shit, you canceled, okay, honey, boo-boo got canceled, so basically the Duggars 19 and counting going that way, too, and um, it's really fucked up because I did not know all of this about the Duggar family, or at least Josh, whatever, because I don't pay attention to them like that, I'm like, oh, this bitch pregnant again, fuck, her uterus should be just gone, like, she should have no fucking walls, but... Montel Williams, the old house uh, 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 talk show host, he went on a Twitter rant just calling Josh Duggars all type of names, scumbag, you this, you pedophile. And he basically, you know, people was coming at him like, you know, you should forgive and all this stuff and, you know, give the guy a break. He made a mistake and all this shit. And he was like, no, when he, um come out and say that he's sorry for the hypocrisy that he did, then maybe he'll give him a pop G for going in on him. And I was like, wait a minute, what did he do? So he worked for this conservative um, non-profit organization with children outreach or some shit like that, which he resigned. And he had some little remarks saying that, you know, he's not here for the gay lifestyle, LGBT, because they are a danger to children. The gays are a danger to children. Yet you admitted to touching little girls that were younger than you. I don't give a damn if you was 14, 15, 13, bitch. You know. You know. Okay? They laying in the bed. They say, go ahead and touch my cootie right here. And they're younger than you. Come on now. But then you admit that. But then, you know, gay people... Are a danger to children. <laughs> you know karma. <laughs> this funny thing called karma. When that bitch come around. 
Lord, don't she come around. But um, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Then out there in Waco, Texas, we got this earlier this week or probably at the end of last week. I don't remember, but they just came out with this biker gang that happened. These two biker gangs. I was like, wait a minute, Sons of Anarchy, this shit really do be happening still? You know, I remember when the Hell Angels was really at their heyday. I used to look at shit like this, you know, like on gangland and stuff like that. They need to bring that back. Gayland and America's Most Wanted and all that shit. I used to look at, you know, them documentaries and stuff on that. Pretty interesting. You learn a lot of stuff. But they had a shootout. They had a shootout at this this club, bar, whatever the fuck it is. And um let me turn this off before. There you go. And nine people got shot. Over a hundred people got injured. And basically they just, it felt like they just washing it under the rugs. Like, it ain't really that, like, it really ain't that big of a deal. But, and then a lot of people keep comparing it to, like, you know, how the media is doing coverage over it. You know, uh, the way they talk about them because they're mostly white. And then they talk about, you know, the black people who was protesting or whoever was protesting with the Baltimore or the Ferguson or whatever. The difference in, you know, how... They sugarcoated with the white people, but we're animals for doing what we're doing. But in this one instance, with these two biker gangs going at each other, nine people died and over 100 people injured with over 1,000 guns found on scene. But we're the animal. They're not thugs. We're thugs. Bitch, they're just as much as thugs, too. They're just a different color. I don't know what. People don't understand thugs coming all shapes, sizes, colors, nationalities, okay? And that's exactly what the fuck they are. They are a gang, too. So, hey, it is what it is. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about that. And, um, <clears throat> it was this, uh, Denver mom, you know, people debating about whether what she did was right or not wrong or whatever she i guess did this video publicly shaming if you want to call it shaming her 13 year old daughter and i honestly don't feel like nothing that she did was wrong okay if you grown and old enough you want to act old and be grown and and do the shit that you're doing then you can suffer that consequence. You want to put yourself out there. You want this attention. I'm going to give you that attention. And I'm going to put this shit on Facebook or whatever. To let everybody know that, hey, my 13-year-old daughter is on here. Facebook, something that she wasn't even supposed to have. Posing and saying that she's 19 years old and posting racy-ass photos. Mind you, this is not the first time that she's done something like this. Nor the first time that she's gotten in trouble like this. Because I think... It was a few more incidents that she had did the same thing and she got ass in trouble for it and she just won't learn until somebody come along and, you know, do something to her ass, you know. And that's just, hey, y'all don't want the fucking parents, you know, whooping the kids because then you're going to say that's child abuse. So, hey, fuck it. You did. I'm whooping your ass and telling you to your face and all this shit. Let me film this shit and put it up there and see how you want. That's the attention you want. I don't think that that lady did anything wrong. You know, it is what it is. Um, I guess R.I.P. to the rapper Chinks. He was a friend of French Montana's. I guess he was in um his little crew or whatever. And I say it like that <clears throat> because... I never heard of Chinks Montana. I mean, Chinks. And the only Chink that I heard of was Chink Santana. And I just heard of him from um, Love and Hip Hop when he came on Love and Hip Hop. But apparently this was a rapper that was um, a New York-based rapper that was within the crew of um, French Montana. I don't listen to French Montana shit either, so I don't keep up. The only thing I know about French Montana is that he fucking around with... Chloe Kardashian on and off, okay? And probably at one point in time was fucking with Trina. You know, that's that's the only thing that I know about him. You know, but basically, he was set up, if you ask me, and it was delivered. I think they say he got shot like 15 times sitting in the car or whatever. Yeah, they knew what they was doing, and um, it's fucked up. And what's really more fucked up is the fact that his death is getting overshadowed by the controversy of him having... um. Maybe possibly having a side chick in Malika 
Chloe friend, one of the twins from ATL, you know, and, um, you know, people like, because the wife came out like, he was a good father, a good husband, because they got like three kids and all this stuff, and, you know, Malika had put a post up with them hugged up on the yacht or whatever, saying how he's going to be, you know, never forgotten and all this stuff and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Oh, uh, you ain't gonna do shit. But anyway, you know, it, um, they was like basically the family members coming out saying, you know, that ain't, that bitch ain't his wife. What y'all need to be fuck sympathy to the sad bitch, give it to the wife and all this stuff. And I'm like, it's fucked up that this man died and this is what y'all are doing. And I remember I seen when the shape uh, shave room post part of the interview. Of the wife, you know, and people was like, wife, first of all, I just don't read the comments sometimes on the shade room because their comments, you know, they attract people who really have the intelligence of a nothing, okay? And I'm just sitting here like, now you hood bitches acting dumb as fuck. Wait a minute, wife? But wait, I thought Malika was his girlfriend. Wait, how can he have a wife and a girlfriend? I'm sitting here like, are you fucking dumb? You mean to tell me y'all don't know or understand the concept of this, of a married man or a person being married having a sad bitch? That's why it's called sad bitch. Sad piece. Sad hoe. Jump off, okay? <laughs> girlfriend. Boyfriend. You know, that thing on the side, all right? That's... I'm sitting here like, are you fucking serious? Are you serious? Y'all really asking this dumbass question? And they was dead ass serious. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm pretty sure y'all look at Love and Hip Hop to get this shit. And half of them motherfuckers commented, been a sad bitch a time or two. But anyway, that's basically what it was. And, you know, condolences go out to her. And I think they found, uh, started a GoFundMe for the family or for the kids or whatever. <sighs> it's sad. But you got to watch your surrounding. I know that question came up because I was listening to the Breakfast Club. They had posed a question like, once you get successful and you come out the hood, you don't need to go back to the hood, like staying in the hood. Okay? You can still support and, and, and all that stuff. But you ain't got to live that, especially when you done shit. Come on now. You got to grow and you got to move on. Um... Speaking of love and hip hop, they said they've been in the fights. I guess at the reunions or whatever. If you try to fight or whatever, you gonna risk the um, take a risk of getting fired. I don't. How y'all feel about that? Sometimes that be the best part. But you know, hey, it is what it is. Let me get into this because I did talk about the feeling myself video at um on the love and hip hop. It ain't much to it. I like it. I love it. The um, Britney, Britney. Oh, bitch. Nikki and Beyonce, they look good in it. Now, what the controversy of, of it is now is Nikki had this shirt that said Pervert 17. And people was like, oh, that shade to Tiger, that shade to Tiger, and all that stuff. And then a picture came out. First of all, um, somebody went and did their research and was like, no, boo, she didn't have this shirt specially made. Givenchy. That's their shirt, you know, and that's their collection. It literally is, you know, pre uh, Proverb 17, you know. And then it was like, it ain't shade to Tiger because Tiger had on the same, a similar shirt that said Proverb 17 a couple of years ago. And I was like, see, y'all always want to make stuff deeper than it is. But I can understand how it could be perceived as shade if you don't know and if you want to assume and if that's what you're about. And, um, I don't think they intentionally be messy like that because, you know, both of them on Barbershop 3, they filming the movie together. Go fucking figure. But then again, you never could really know these celebs these days. They be underhandedly shady, subtle, so subtle that you miss it, you know. But, um, Google and this nigga house. First of all, who the fuck is typing in nigga house? For Google, and then a White House pop up talking about some some they was hacked. Like who really is sitting there saying Google nigger house, and then a White House pop up. Like first of all, why are you googling nigger house? But we all get what that's about, you know. Mm hmm. 
we didn't see this. We didn't know. Girl, get the fuck out of here. But that was basically it. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm ending this video on a good note. It's Memorial Day weekend. Of course, I want y'all to have a good time. And I want y'all to be safe. But my week was made when Janet Jackson opened up her mouth. She literally did. All of a sudden, probably like at the end of last week, on the weekend, earlier that week, she was retweeting a lot of stuff. I said, and usually when she started tweeting, when she ain't had nothing out, it usually be like sent from Janet's team or, you know, Janet tweets this or Janet changed this in her life and style on her website. It's her team that's tweeting for her. But she was on there retweeting all of a sudden and then she responded to a couple of things and then she just retweeting and retweeting. And I'm sitting here like, what the fuck? And then you got Jimmy Jam. He tweeting about this quote, this quote, this quote. And then hashtagging it, conversations in the cafe and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, shit, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, Miss Jenny gets on Twitter and tweets this link out. And then it's like a 30-second clip of her talking about something. You heard it from my lips. I told you you would hear it from my lips. I've been listening, okay? She was sounding ever much so the phone sex operator, you know, that bitch is 49 years old. Mind you, she did it on her birthday. I said, girl, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. She was like, I've been listening. Basically, what I interpreted that is, she been listening to us saying, Janet, bring your ass on out here. You know, um, I'm tired of waiting. Where the fuck you been at? It's been years. We need some new music. Where did you go? Come up out the sand, okay? You got that rich dick, all right? We know you having fun, but come on back to us to your home, all right, and she's been listening to the bullshit that's been coming out, you know, okay, and she has to come back and say, you know, I gave y'all y'all turn to, you know, fuck it up, and let me show y'all how old pro do it, okay, and I don't give a fuck if Jenny sells or not, the bitch said that she is coming out with new music, I'm there, she's going on a war tour, bitch, I am there, okay, I don't give a care if the shit goes negative plastic. Ashley will be listening to it. Ashley will be there. You know, um, it is what it is. I'm just glad that she's back. And uh, it's called Conversations in the Cafe. Girl, what you talking? But um, <laughs> I just can't wait. That's Y'all know that's baby mama. But um, hey. <clears throat> That is the end of the video. Oh, yeah. I wanted to talk about one more thing. Before, let this be an example. Let this be an example. And, you know, for y'all to, when y'all do business with people, make sure you ain't got too many middlemen. These motherfuckers. Make sure you ain't got too many middlemen in between and that you are on top of your business and you know what your transactions and stuff is going and when you receive and stuff. So you won't have a be looking stupid like that artist who was in um uh Jay-Z Picasso baby video. She was like, so Jay-Z wanted me to do this um this video with him. And I said, sure, I do it because it's Jay-Z, but, you know, you have to do something for me. I lived up to my end of the bargain, and he didn't. Mind you, Picasso, baby, that shit came out like two years ago, okay? And you wait two years to say some shit about it, right? And he basically, I guess it was like a monetary donation or whatever the fuck it was. And they was like, she was like, I feel used. It was a cruel thing that he did. I will never work with another artist like that again, musician and all this stuff, and yada, yada, yada. Tried to throw his reputation in the dirt. I said, Jay boo what the fuck is y'all doing over there? You're doing all this shit, but y'all can't pay up? Y'all can't, you know, to y'all end of the bargain and stuff? Jay came out with his shit and said, no, boo-boo. I got receipts. And then the museum that the shit was supposed to come out said, we apologize to Jay-Z because, you know, he did do a donation and live up to his end of the bargain and all this stuff. See? What the fuck was you doing that you didn't know? Okay? Get the fuck. But, yeah. It's Labor Day weekend. I have a three-day weekend. I'm just going to be chilling, catching up on some sleep and just, you know, doing what I do. And I want y'all to be careful. 
be safe, and have a good time. And I will see y'all later. Peace. And shout out to Much Love. You know, I should have said this at the beginning. I know her and her family going through it. Her husband's um, mother passed away, I think, either last week or whatever. And I know she got a video up now. She just put up a new video today. But um, she hadn't been posted last week or earlier this week. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers still going out to her. And y'all send some love her way. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.